Chapter 23, Eye Acupuncture Therapy. Eye acupuncture, a new modality of acupuncture therapy, was created by Dr. Pan Jingshan, professor of Liaoning College of Traditional Chinese Medicine and an eminent veteran of traditional Chinese medicine in China today. The therapy, based on the ancient medical concept of diagnosing diseases by inspecting the eyes by Hua Tuo in the Han Dynasty, is a result of Professor Peng's more than two decades of research in the field. Focusing on the special 13 points located in the eight defined region or parts of the eyes, eye acupuncture is considered convenient, painless, and highly effective. Its theoretical basis comes from the eight diagrams of yin yang in the I Ching and from the doctrines of the Zhang Fu Meridian and the eight regions of the white of the eye in the five orbiculi. Its diagnostic focus is on inspecting the bulbar conjunctiva. Principles of Eye Acupuncture Therapy The eye, the organ of vision, is one of the five sense organs and carries out important functions in the course of a human being's life. In the Huangdi Nei Jing, there are many insightful expositions regarding the essential functions of the eye, such as, every vessel is related to the eye. The essence of the five Zhang and six Fu viscera are transported to the eye to be its essence. And, provided the liver is functioning well and harmoniously, it is the liver qi that ascends to the eyes, enabling them to distinguish the five colors. TCM theory also holds that the eye is the window of the soul, and that the look of the eye reveals whether a person is wise or foolish, outspoken or quietspoken, soft or hard-spirited, and whether he is to have a long life or a short life. Therefore, determining the quality of spirit in the eyes can provide the doctor with insights as to how the disease is developing and can be used as a diagnostic medium in some diseases. Section 1. Relation of the eye to the meridian. Traditional Chinese medicine theory holds that the eye and the meridian are closely related. The blood and chi of the 12 meridians and their 365 collaterals go up to the eye and the head. And the eye is the hub of all vessels. According to the meridian chapter of Ling Shu, in the Huangdi Nei Jing, the following meridians all originate from around the eye. The stomach meridian of the foot Yang Ming, the bladder meridian of the foot Tai Yang, and the gallbladder meridian of the foot Shao Yang. The meridians terminating around the eye are the small intestine meridian of the hand Tai Yang, the Sanjiao meridian of the hand Xiaoyang, and the large intestine meridian of the hand Yangming. In addition, the six yin meridians of the hand and foot and the eight extra meridians are directly or indirectly connected to the eye. Section 2. Basic Concept of Ba Gua The eight diagrams of the Ba Gua are the eight basic figures consisting of various combinations of two symbols, Yang being a single unbroken line and Yin being a segmented one. The eight figures are called Qian, Kan, Gen, 
、正、心、理、坤、对 ，in that order, representing the eight phenomena in nature, being heaven, water, mountain, thunder, wind, fire, earth, and pond, respectively, to explain how the world is formed. And the changes that occur within it. To some extent, the Bagua theory provided a basis for eye acupuncture by providing the five orbiculi and eight parts theory. Section three: Division and location of the eight parts around the eye. Referring to the doctrine of the eight diagrams, we divide the area around the eye into eight regions or parts. The methods are as follows: In Yin Yang theory, the left is considered Yang and the right Yin. Therefore, we consider starting from the left eye to locate the points. First, with the eyes facing forward, make a cross at the center of the pupil, passing respectively the inner and outer canthus and the upper and lower eyelids, thus forming four quadrants. Second. Divide equally each quadrant into two parts. In this way, we have completed the process of dividing the left eye into eight parts. Next, we can make the corresponding associations relating the eight parts around the left eye to the bagua. According to the bagua, the upper matches north, the lower south, the left east, and the right west. So we have Tian situated in the northwest is the first part. Kan situated due north is the second part. Gun situated northeast is the third part. Chun situated due east is the fourth part. Xun situated southeast is the fifth part. Li situated due south is the sixth part. Kun situated southwest is the seventh part, and Dui situated due west is the eighth part. A mirror image of the Bagua on the left eye is what it would look like on the right eye. However, Since the order is clockwise on the left eye, it should be counterclockwise on the right. The meridian points are located symmetrically on the left and right sides. Section four: Corresponding relations of the eight parts around the eye. To the zhang fu. We determine the property of each of the eight parts according to the distribution of the ba gua and the property of the five elements in the zhang fu. So therefore, the first part qian matches metal, corresponding to the lung and large intestine. The second part kan matches water, corresponding to the kidney and bladder. The third part, gun, symbolizes mountain, which is high, belonging to their shang jiao. The fourth part, zhen, matches wood, corresponding to the liver and gallbladder. The fifth part, xun, symbolizes wind, belonging to the zhong jiao. The sixth part, li, matches fire, corresponding to the heart and small intestine. The seventh part, kun, matches earth. Corresponding to the spleen and stomach, and the eighth part, Dui, symbolizes pond, belonging to the Xia Jiao. Divided as such, in part one, two, four, six, and seven, there are two points for each, pertaining to a pair of Zhang and Fu viscera. In part three. Five and eight, there is one point for each. As for the nomenclature, the points are either named after the corresponding tangfu organs or after the ordinal numbers of the part where the point is located. Collectively, they are called the thirteen points or the eight parts around the eye. Chapter two: Diagnosing diseases by inspecting the eye. Eye inspection is an important component of eye acupuncture therapy. 
The vessels of the bulwark conjunctiva in a healthy person are indistinct and barely visible. When a person is ill, the vessels will take on various changes in shape and in color, from which we can judge the site, nature, course, effect, and prognosis of the disease. It also serves as a valuable guidance in the selection of points for eye acupuncture. Some common changes of the shape of the vessels of the bulbar conjunctiva and their corresponding indications. Number one, thick vessels with large roots. The vessels on the border of the white of the eye appear thick and large and become thinner as it goes on. This kind of vessel often indicates a chronic and persistent ailment. Number two, cirrhosoid vessel. The vessel is full of twists and turns. This kind of vessel reveals a disease in serious condition. Number three, stretched vessel. A vessel in one part bestrides the next part. This kind of vessel may show which meridian the disorder comes from and what meridian it spreads over. Number four, branching vessels. This occurs more often in the upper part of the eye. It means the patient's condition is unstable and variable. Number five, projection vessel. The vessel remarkably stands out as if it is on a glass plate it often indicates the disorders of the six Fu organs. Number six, a hazy scene. The vessel is blurred, often in the liver gallbladder part. It suggests a case of T stasis with the liver depression. Number seven, like dropping dew. In this case, it appears as if a dew drop is hanging down at the end of the vessel. If it is in the stomach or intestine part, it often indicates a case of enterostosis. If it is in some other part, it usually indicates melancholia. Some common changes of the color of the vessels of the bulbar conjunctiva. Number one, bright red. A bright red vessel confirms that a new disease is in progress and it is an excessive heat syndrome. Number two, deep red. When the vessel turns deep red, it often indicates a febrile disease and is a serious case. Number three, dark red. A deep red vessel with some darkened spots marks an interior transmission of a febrile disease. Number four, yellowish red. A yellowish red vessel implies a case that is becoming mild. Five, pale. A pale vessel is caused by deficiency of qi and blood, a case of deficient or cold syndrome. Number six, dark gray. A dark gray vessel confirms the focus of an old disease. The symptoms have gone, but the marks on the vessels will remain forever.
Chapter 3, Clinical Applications of Eye Acupuncture Therapy. Section 1, Method of Acupuncture. Needles. Because there are abundant blood vessels around the eye, hemorrhaging will occur if an inappropriate needling technique is used. Therefore, thin and short needles should be selected for treatment. The most suitable ones are made of stainless steel, 15 millimeters in length and 0.3 millimeters in diameter. Insertion. One hand acts as the pressing hand and the other as the needling hand. Hold the needle with the thumb and index finger. When inserting, the motion must be quick, but also steady and precise. A swift insertion will cause less pain. The depth of the insertion is about 10 millimeters. After insertion, if the patient has a feeling of qi, no extra manipulations like lifting and thrusting or twirling should be used. If there is no needling sensation, lift the needle about one-third of the inserted part. Change the direction of the pointed end and insert it again. For the purpose of stimulating qi, one can scrape the handle of the needle gently. Commonly used techniques are such as, number one, tapping. With the patient's eyes closed, the doctor uses one hand to cover the patient's eyelid and the other to lightly tap the end of the needle five to seven times at the selected point. The tapping should also be gentle so as not to cause bleeding. Number two, transverse puncturing. After puncturing into the skin, insert the needle horizontally into the subcutaneous tissue. Do not go any deeper. Number three, double puncturing. After inserting one needle, insert another one beside it and in the same direction so as to strengthen the effect. Number four, go puncturing. In the same point area, insert one needle into the intraorbital and another into the lateral orbital. In this way, a better result may be obtained. Number five, intraorbital puncturing. Locate precisely the orbital margin and insert the needle perpendicularly with the end of the needle towards the orbit. Number six, contralateral puncturing. When the diseased side does not respond to treatment, try the same eye part on the healthy side. Number seven, intraorbital implantation. For a patient who does not consistently respond to treatment, an intradermal needle on the relevant points around the eye may be embedded for one to two days, immobilized with adhesive plaster. Number eight, electric acupuncture. After the insertion, an electrical stimulator may be connected through the handle of the needle with very low level current.
points. Number nine, point pressing. Use a matchstick or the handle of a three-edge needle to press the eye point for treatment. Number 10, combination method. Eye acupuncture may be used alone or in combination with other acupuncture techniques or medicine. Duration of needle retaining. The retaining period should not be too long, approximately 5 to 15 minutes. When withdrawing, hold the handle of the needle with the two fingers of the right hand and move the handle several times before withdrawing it halfway. Halt the withdrawal for a few seconds and then withdraw the rest of the inserted needle gently. Swiftly press the punctured site with a dry cotton ball so as to prevent bleeding. If bleeding does occur, the pressing time shall be longer than usual. If there is subcutaneous blood stasis the next day, a hot compress may be used. Generally speaking, it will disappear in three days. Contraindication. For those who tend to be trembling, restless, or whose eyelids are thicker than average, eye acupuncture should not be applied. Section 2. Principle of Point Selection. Number one, selection of the corresponding meridian points. This is also called the selection of points according to syndrome differentiation. For example, for disorders pertaining to a given meridian or a given viscera, and for points or the related visceral part around the eye that are needled. For instance, for lumbago due to kidney deficiency, the second part belonging to the kidney and bladder should be selected. Number two, Selection of the points on the basis of eye inspection. Select the part where there is the most notable change of the vessel of the eyeball, no matter where the disease corresponds. 3. Selection of the point according to the disease part. If the disease site is located in the area above the diaphragm, the Shang Diao part should be selected. If the disease site is in the area between the diaphragm and the loin, the Zhongjiao part should be selected. If the disease site is in the area below the loin, the Xiajiao part should be selected. Section 3. Treatment of commonly encountered diseases with eye acupuncture. Number one, hemiplegia. In this case, a hemiplegic patient, unable to live on his own, walked into the clinic under support. The left half of his body was paralyzed after apoplexy. His pulse was stringy and thready. The left hand suffered from spastic paralysis and the fingers of which he could not stretch.
His tongue was red with a scanty coating. Eye inspection showed the vessels in the kidney part were thick, large, varicose, and purplish red in color. The vessels of the shang and xia jiao parts were bright red. Before the treatment, the patient could not lift his upper limb by himself. He could move his left lower limb a little once in a while, but not consistently. On his right side, the hand and leg could move as normal. Based on the disease sites, we selected the xia and sheng jiao parts on both sides. Upon examination following the treatment, the patient showed that he could raise his leg by himself about 50 centimeters compared with 70 centimeters by his right leg. The upper movement of his left hand was also noticeably improved. Five minutes after the treatment, the patient was able to get off the bed by himself and walk slowly about in the clinic. Number two, acute lumbar sprain. Suffering from severe lumbago, the patient had great difficulty in walking by himself and he had to be supported by his relatives when he walked into the clinic. His pulse was stringy and tense. His tongue coating was white. Eye examination revealed that the vessels of the xia jiao part became thicker and were bright red in color. This was an acute case. He selected the points according to the disease site and needled his bilateral xia jiao parts intraorbitally. After treatment, we let the patient stand up and slowly move his loin.
By then, the patient was feeling less tension in the loin, and the pain alleviated. Number three, cholelithiasis. Having an acute attack of biliary colic, the patient is suffering from unbearably severe pain in the right loin. His pulse was stringy and tense. His tongue coating was white. Eye inspection revealed bright red and thick vessels in the liver gallbladder part. The vessels stretch right to the Zhongjiao part. We selected points according to eye inspection and inserted a needle on his right liver gallbladder part. The patient felt an immediate alleviation from the pain, which continued to gradually subside. Number four, periarthritis of the shoulders. The patient had pain in the shoulders with limited movement of the upper limb as a result of periarthritis. Her pulse was thready and spiritless, and her tongue coating was white. Eye inspection showed vessels in the Shangjiao part had become thicker and light red in color. Based on eye inspection, we selected the points and needled her bilateral shangjiao parts in combination with the lung, large intestine parts on both sides. After the treatment, the patient felt the pain alleviated. She could also raise her hand and touch her head. The range of movement in her upper arm was greatly extended. Number five, a stiff neck. This patient suffered from a stiff neck on his left side. Mm -hmm. 
He could hardly move his neck by himself, and when it was moved passively, it caused him severe pain. Eye inspection showed the vessels in the lung, large intestine, and the shangjiao parts on the left side were bright red, indicating the disorder was in the early stages. Right after the needle was inserted into the shangjiao part of the eye of the disease site. The patient felt his neck relax immediately. The pain gradually alleviated. Number six. Hypertension. This patient suffers from hypertension, with blood pressure of 221 over 125 millimeters per mercury. We selected the point. According to the syndrome differentiation, and needled his bilateral liver gallbladder parts. We examined his blood pressure right after treatment. 197 over 121 millimeters per mercury. It decreased both in systolic and diastolic pressure. His heartbeat slowed down as well. Number seven, a toothache. This patient had an ache in her lower right teeth. Her pulse was deep and tense. The tongue coating was thin and yellow in color. Eye inspection showed the vessels in the lung, large intestine part were deep red with some branches. We needled her right lung, large intestine part and the shangjiao part. The toothache was eased at once. Number eight, chronic gastralgia. The patient was suffering from chronic gastralgia. The pulse was deep and thready. Eye inspection revealed vessels in the zhongjiao and the spleen stomach parts were deep red in color. Selecting the points of the disease site, we punctured her bilateral zhongjiao parts, but there was not much relief with regard to her gastralgia. After twirling the needle and scraping the handle of the needle, the patient had the feeling of dirty, and the pain was alleviated. Clinical practice shows that the major effects of eye acupuncture are resuscitation, 
clearing and activating meridians, regulating the flow of vital energy, reducing pain, and strengthening the vitality of organic tissues. So far, there have been over 40 types of clinical indications which can be treated with eye acupuncture therapy. With the growth of education and application of eye acupuncture therapy, the extent of indications of this therapy are also expanding, and it will make greater contributions to the health of humankind.